definitely releasing Fem Catholics paid leave report, aggregating all the paid leave policies in the diocese in the United States, uh, and then seeing the conversation from that actually mm-hmm. result in multiple dioceses changing their policies really rather quickly. Um, wow. You know, giving a couple weeks, some even giving more than a couple weeks, uh, and just the resulting conversation and the from that um, was it was surprising. I mean, I was excited to see that happen, but also surprised mm-hmm. at their response and really encouraged. That's phenomenal. Well, let's get into all of that. We're today we're joined by Samantha Pavlock from Fem Catholic. She's the founder of Fem Catholic. Welcome, Samantha. Good to have you with us. Thanks. Uh, Fem Catholic, it's a media company for women living in the tension between their faith and real life. I mean, that just sounds like smart Catholics. She's a Notre Dame grad, and she spent the last decade working in corporate America in Chicago. She's now in Philadelphia. She and her husband have three children. Um, before diving into talking about what Fem Catholic does in your work, I'd love to hear more of your story and and if uh, what happened to you such that this was just a project you needed to to build out and work on? Yeah. Um, so I have just always loved having discussions. Um, I tell a, a story about my time in college. At, when I was at Notre Dame, I had some high school friends in one of the boys' dorms there and stopped by one night. Long story short is I ended up having like an hour conversation with a Notre Dame football player about abortion. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> these are the types of things my friends would not be surprised to hear that I was doing, um, getting distracted doing. And it was it was a great conversation and really just getting to know his perspective and even seeing how maybe he was sort of like had internalized his own um, value as a as a bit, you know football player on campus and how important that was Um that your value really comes from kind of your capabilities and your ability and versus just sort of an essential human dignity. Um, And so it was, it was a wonderful conversation. And the next day in the cafeteria, uh, he happened to be sitting next to my now husband. We were dating at the time and they were in the same dorm. Mm -hmm. You know, I walked by and said, hi. And um, he was like, Oh, you know, Sam too. And Matt said, yeah. And he goes, Oh, she is a strong-willed woman. <laughs> um, and just, just I think that conversation did leave an impact on him, hopefully. Um, and I, mm-hmm. I've always enjoyed just encountering all people, whether, you know, football players, feminists, uh, Catholics, smart Catholics who want to talk about real issues and, and finding the truth in the midst of our faith. Um, and so mm-hmm. it's really sort of just a... I think a calling that um, was bound to happen at one point or another. Um, my time in in corporate America and in Chicago, you know, people are, sometimes in Catholic circles are surprised to hear that, like IVF was openly talked about in my workplace. That that was something people did. They'd wait till they were about forty, have one kid through IVF. Mm-hmm. Um, at one point, a colleague of mine was joking how she had told her best friend to selectively reduce or abort uh, her second twin who had, who had stuck after IVF. Um, so I think just the the landscape that people are navigating in the world um, mm-hmm. is one that we, we need to talk about, you know, how are we going to have these conversations and encounter people when sometimes Catholic mm-hmm. views on these issues are, are really radically different than where other people are coming from. Yeah. You had a, a, an amazing, you had a note that you sent where you said feminism is no longer just a movement. It's the undertone of secular society. Can you, can you unpack that? And I'm curious to learn how, how do you define feminism? Because I've seen it articulated or lived out in just especially online a variety of different ways. What's the, the way that you're approaching it? Uh, and you wish people would understand. Yeah. So I think, um, I mean, we could get into a lot of different, you know, the history of feminism and the different waves and stuff. Cause it, it sort of started in the United States with women pushing for the right to vote, which makes sense. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I think Catholics would all agree women should have a right to vote. Uh, and, but then obviously it got tangled up with the sexual revolution and 
a lot of now secular feminist rhetoric, and we're seeing it obviously after Roe v. Wade, is grounded in the fact that abortion and contraception are essential to women's equality. And so we're having this, I think, really massive culture war in a way of what is women's involvement in society and equality going to look like? Is it going to look like women having to choose between children and career or societal involvement? Or are we going to start making more inroads to support women sort of as our biology is designed um, right? and just creating a more family friendly culture in that way. And it, it, so that speaks to uh, what I think it's really interesting to me that Pope John Paul II, he wrote many documents on women, but it was, it's interesting to me that actually in Evangelium Vitae, this document he wrote on the dignity of life. So it's sort of his Mm pro-life encyclical. It was in there that he has a a section, he calls for a new feminism. And he uses that word um, for women to rise up in the name of a new feminism, not imitating men. And I I think what he means by that is really women as women in our biology. And he says, you need to reconcile people with life. And I interpret that to mean reconciling the world and society and communities with the fact that, yeah, women have babies. And that is not, you know, does not lend itself to efficiency and productivity and utilitarianism. And it's it's very countercultural in some ways, especially in America. Um, And we have to grapple with that. And I think for a long time, secular feminists in our culture have grappled with that in, you know, by sort of taking women's equality forward Um, but sacrificing Mm -hmm. the fertility piece and saying, well, you know, we know that we can work alongside men in the workplace. We just have to make sure we don't have kids. And so I am working Mm -hmm. towards this new feminism Pope John Paul II is calling for where, yes, men and women are equal. Women are intelligent. You know, my husband and I got the same major at Notre Dame, um, but we encountered different challenges in the workplace. We've encountered different challenges in life. And Some of those need to be accommodated. Some of those need to be, um, you know, like obviously discrimination and oppression. We need to get rid of that. But there's a lot, it's it's complex. Um, And so I think there's a lot of discussion to be had in how we do that. Yeah, it's a completely underserved, under, um, well, appreciated, but that lifestyle and the feminine lifestyle is very different. And how women approach doing work is so different to how men approach work and the needs are different. The environment, the cultures and contexts are so, so different. So when you say feminism is an undertone of secular society, I assume you're talking about secular feminism versus Mm -hmm. the new feminism that Femme Catholic is now built all around. So you're, you're a media company. Can you talk about what Femme Catholic does and what people can find when they visit there? Yeah. So we started out as a collaborative blog um, or a collaborative site, different women writing articles um, and have grown. We now, uh, we had our first conference. We actually have our second conference coming up in Nashville, Tennessee, October awesome. 29th. Um, Wonderful. So I would love for folks to join us there. Uh, and so we, we have videos and written content on our website, femcatholic.com. Just talking about this tension, how do we, be a hundred percent pro woman, which I think is very Catholic. It's deeply Catholic to support women. Um, but also navigate the tension of the world and the challenges that women are facing in the light of our faith and asking hard questions on both sides of the aisle. I think our maternity leave report did a great job of that, of saying, you know, here's some of the writings of Pope John Paul II talking about the importance of women's equality and how including women, in society will force systems to be redesigned, he says, towards building a civilization of love. Um, So we called Mm -hmm. our our campaign after this report, building a civilization of love, because we wanna draw Catholics attention to that. And uh, the reality that, you know, maternity leave is something dioceses and Catholic organizations need to explore to support women and families. Um, and I think that's where women, uh, through our 
biology often just need to sort through Catholic teachings in sort of a very practical way sooner than men sometimes. Okay. Um, so for example, many people know that the Catholic church does not support birth control. Uh, well, many girls go to the doctor at like 13, 14, 15, 16, as soon as you're having acne, as soon as you're having all of a sudden your doctor is telling you, this is what you should be using. And women are having to make choices about that. Okay. Well, if I'm using it for acne, does it matter? But then fast forward 10 years, you're dating. Now, does it matter? How, just how do I have that conversation? How do I have these conversations with, with my doctors, with my boyfriends, with my friends? I mean, so it, there's sort of, um, sometimes people talk about the war on women, but I, I, I think there really is sort of a war that women are in, in culture. And that's what I mean when I say that feminism is this undertone to society that Catholic, even Catholic women are just sort of bumping up this world in which women are expected to act a certain way and do certain things. And it, it is understood a little bit to be your ticket to a seat at the table. Um, so how do we as Catholics just right. challenge that a little bit? Definitely. No, I, I a lot of it. Um, with uh, being married the last 10 years and I've got a little girl now and me realizing and waking up to how much needs to be rethought and rechanged. And, and it's why it's wonderful to find work like what you're doing. And it's exactly why we have a community like smart Catholics is we need to be having these kinds of discussions. We need to create a community, a place where people can talk about them. This stuff needs to happen. Um, who are the kinds of people who are going to get the most out of uh, visiting the website? How do they get involved? Yeah, so we have the the written and video content on our site, and um, primarily we are creating content for millennial women. Um, but anybody that's interested in women's issues, if you have a sister, daughter, uh, friend, we are really intentional about creating content that is faithfully Catholic, uh, but maybe not overtly so. So we are trying to encounter you know, the vast majority of millennial women were, who were identify as Catholic, Beautiful. maybe were raised Catholic, mm -hmm. um, but are not necessarily rah-rah about practicing their faith. Um, they have right. questions. And frankly, I think a lot of them are a little bit jaded um, from having this experience of being raised yes. Catholic and then encountering sort of the real world where they and their, mm -hmm. you know, their body and their life and their choices are are that battleground. Um, and so mm -hmm. we're trying to just really meet them where they are in their real experiences, but also share yes. how our writers and experts have found a way forward um, in the Catholic faith mm -hmm. and in the truth of our faith too, because there, there are a lot of people out there with a lot of opinions about Catholics and women. Um, and some of them are less accurate than others about <laughs> The actual teaching so mm -hmm. um we yeah. we are really intentional about trying to back up our content with good resources um, and that real life experience so people can join they can subscribe to get access to all of our content uh, we also have a book club if women are interested in that a virtual book club and then our conference coming up is probably the most exciting thing we do mm -hmm. um, it is meant to be an annual event nice. covid COVID definitely interrupted that, um, but we're excited to get back to it October 29th in Nashville. Tell, so tell us about the conference. It's it's in person. Is there anything being live streamed? Uh, how does it work? What can people expect? Yeah, so nothing, uh, nothing planned to be live streamed right now. We were able to record the talks last time, and we're hoping to do that again. So people can watch the talks from our first mm -hmm. conference um, that was in Chicago. It sold out 400 people from across the country. Uh, some from Canada too. So we had, you know, cross border. Um, mm -hmm. It will just be a gathering of women and men actually who are really passionate about women's equality, but also and, and women's well being and women's um, experiences in life, but also our faith and that, that tension and that tone mm -hmm. that we hold. Um, so it's, it's really a special place because I think a lot of people who, are passionate about women um, and these issues, 
in their circle of friends or in their community, they tend to be it's just they don't fit necessarily with uh, with their community. And a lot of Catholic communities tend to be, um, you know, either a little more conservative or a little more liberal or, you know, obviously smart Catholics is trying to sort of right. go in that tension as well. Um, but there is something so beautiful mm-hmm. about actually meeting people and in real life. Um, it can be so encouraging. Yeah. So the conference is a great place for that. That's fantastic. That's amazing. It's such an amazing mission. And I'm excited to... Uh, I hope that pe- more people can engage with what you're doing and, and so on. Where can people find you online, Samantha? And uh, you personally, but then also Femme Catholic. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't have a lot of uh, personal social media stuff, but I do femcatholic.com sure. is the best place to find us. And then we are on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, LinkedIn, um, all under Femme Catholic. Awesome. Well, for those who are watching this, if you enjoyed this and then you support what Samantha is saying, please do hit that like button. It does help YouTube to, to push this video out to, to more people. They can hear the message and learn about what she's doing. This show, Mastermind, it's brought to you by the free online community for Catholic millennials, creators, and learners who want faithful conversations unafraid of doubts and questions. And it's exactly what Samantha has been saying. Together, let's get smarter. Come and check us out on smartcatholics.com. Samantha, if you had one minute to share a word of encouragement to to people everywhere, especially Catholics, you know, around the world, and you had one minute to say something to them, what would you want to say? Mm, I think uh, the world offers people and women uh, freedom, but only in the church and in our faith, I think, can you find peace and joy. And I think that at the end of the day, that's what that's what we're all really looking for. Um and so keep searching, keep searching for truth. Um, Edith Stein has a great quote that if do not accept truth without love or love without truth, and that's kind of my guiding start too. So 